Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so bless check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to investigate yet another distribution that can be fruitfully used to model stock returns and asset returns in general, and that is the skewed generalized error distribution, or the skewed generalized normal distribution, or skewed GED for short. And it is another take on the error distribution we have covered in one of the previous videos, so check this out if you're interested in the error distribution, the default error distribution. However, now we are interested in the skewed version of the same parameterization. And in terms of the mathematics, it is quite intuitive, really. It uses the tweaked logic of the cumulative distribution function and the probability density function of the standard normal or Gaussian distribution that is denoted by capital phi for the CDF and uh, small phi, lowercase phi, for the PDF. However, instead of just the scaled uh, x, the z statistic over here, we have got another parameterization for the z stat on top of here in this formula that involves the shape parameter, an additional third parameter of the distribution that is denoted c. And if c is equal to zero, then our distribution function just reduces to a simple normal distribution. If c is equal to zero, it is symmetric, it is not skewed, skewness is equal to zero, and our z stat is just the scaled x as you normally have it in the normal distribution. x minus location parameter m divided over the scale parameter b. However, if c is non-zero, then the parameterization is actually quite interesting. We have got minus one over c times natural logarithm ln of this expression over here. And that allows us to achieve a wide range of different skewed distributions. Left skewed distributions for positive values of c and right skewed distributions for the negative value of c. And in terms of theoretical skewness and courtesies, those can be calculated by just using the c parameter and that's it. The skewness depends on the sign of our c parameter and this expression over here that involves just taking the exponent of squared shape parameter c. And the courtesis parameter here has a similar take on the uh, shape parameter c. So skewness and courtesis, the shape of the distribution, depends only on the shape parameter, which is quite intuitive. And if we plug in zero into both of those, we might be able to verify immediately that our uh, skewness and courtesis for c equals zero are going to be zeros, which verifies the fact that for c equals zero, we have got just the regular normal distribution. However, let's start parameterizing our skewed generalized error distribution by first inputting the default versions of the parameters, and let's get uh, our starting values equal to sample mean, sample standard deviation, and zero. So let's start at the normal distribution and use the maximum likelihood estimation to see if we can arrive at something that approximates stock returns better. And as our guinea pig today, as our uh, test data set, we have got, as usual, S&P 500 returns over a five-year period to provide some comparison with other distributions we have investigated in this large video series. So first, let's copy the average and the standard deviation as values over here, as our starting values for the location and scale parameters in M and B, and for the shape parameter C, we just input zero. And here, let's just also calculate sample skewness and courtesies to then see how skewed our distribution should be to proxy stock returns adequately. So let's just calculate the skew of our stock returns, and let's calculate the courtesies of said stock returns. And we can see that our distribution is moderately left skewed with a skewness parameter of minus 0.45, so we expect the optimal value of the shape parameter to be positive. Positive C leads to negative skewness, negative C leads to positive skewness, and our courtesies is quite 
high but not too high 3.83 so we might be able to achieve a decent fit with this distribution isn't it and now let's start with our parameterization so first for simplicity let's calculate this uh, adjusted z stat so first of all if our shape parameter that we've got over here and we need to lock the row is equal to zero then it's just your usual z stat meaning that we just need to input the ranked return uh, over here in cell E3, subtract the location parameter M that we have got over here, lock in the row as well, and adjust it by the scale parameter B over here, lock in the row as well. But if it's not zero, then we've got this parameterization over here that we'll just trans translate into the language of Axel right now. So minus one over shape parameter C, times the natural logarithm of 1 minus c times the z stat, the so-called uh, scaled x. And we can just copy it here for brevity, paste it over here, close the parentheses, and enforce the formula. And then we can bottom left click it all the way down to get our z stat that then we'll use to calculate our uh, skewed uh, GED, skewed generalized error distribution, cumulative and probability density functions. So for the skewed uh, cumulative distribution function, it's very straightforward. We just need to input the standard normal distribution of the Z stat, and we need it to be cumulative as it's a CDF. And for the skewed uh, generalized error distribution uh, PDF, we need to start in a similar fashion, norm as dist, input the Z stat we've just calculated, input zero as it's a probability density function, not the cumulative function we have coded it over here. And then, as per the formula, we need to adjust it by the following expression. Over here in the formula, we have got our B parameter, lock in the row here, minus the shape parameter C times the X, which is E3 for the first observation, and we're not locking it as we wanted to change throughout, minus the location parameter M. And quite interestingly, what this uh, functional expression tells you is for c not equal to zero, this distribution is actually bounded. And that is what uh, actually generates uh, non-zero skewness in both sides. So if we arrive at some uh, non-zero value of c as our optimal parameter, we can actually see whether the distribution is bounded from below or from above. Right skewed distributions are bounded from below and left skewed distributions are bounded from above. So let's now enforce this formula and enforce these throughout the whole sample. And then we'll be able to calculate the log likelihood function. And this log likelihood function uh, just uh, sums the logarithms of probability density functions in column J and uh, to uh, ease the convergence of the algorithm to the optimal values, we use the if error function. So if some uh, value uh, returns an error, so a probability density function of zero or a negative value, then we just return minus a thousand. So the algorithm knows we don't want it to venture there. And now let's go to data solver and specify our task. We need our uh, objective function in cell C1272, which is our log likelihood over here, to be maximized by changing the uh, variable cells with parameter values, with parameter values for location, scale, and shape parameters, so those three cells. We can use gradient descent for this particular task, and we don't need to uh, tick this box. We can allow some of our parameter values, namely location and shape, to be negative, so we untick that. And we can be certain that convergence will be achieved simply because we have enabled uh, smooth convergence by using the if error function in the log likelihood function. So now we can click solve and wait until the algorithm converges to the optimal value. And it has just did. And we can see that we have arrived at a shape parameter value of 0.04, resulting in a moderately left skewed distribution. The theoretical skewness and kurtosis can now be calculated using these formulas. So for the theoretical skewness, we can simply use this formula. So we need to input if our shape parameter is equal to zero, then uh, we need to return zero. And if it's not zero, we have to calculate it using this formula. So sine of our C parameter times the fraction. In the numerator, we have got three times the exponent of C squared 
minus the exponent of 3, c squared, minus 2, and in the denominator we'll have the exponent of c squared minus 1, and raise the whole denominator to the power of 3 halves. And then we close the parentheses and enforce the formula and get a theoretical skewness of minus 0 0.13, which is quite a bit lower in magnitude than the empirical skewness, but that's mostly what you get when uh, estimating uh, those types of functions using maximum likelihood. Uh, that is not something to be worried about necessarily. And for curtises, we can use this function over here. So the exponent of 4 times c squared plus 2 times the exponent of 3 c squared plus 3 times the exponent of 2 c squared. Quite bulky, isn't it? And finally, minus 6. And we have a quite low value of theoretical skewness at 0 0.03. And that uh, means that our uh, distribution function, the source of its skewness, cannot be necessarily explained uh, that well by this particular parameterization, and you would rather use other uh, generalized distribution families, uh, such as, for example, asymmetric Laplace or asymmetric generalizations of power law functions. And those are either videos we have already got on our channel or those that I will seek to record in the future. But that's all there is for the SKU GED parameterization and its application in Excel. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make you to see any further suggestions on videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.